Homeless and homelessness. What pops up whenever you hear someone say homeless? Maybe you've heard the expression, he's momentarily homeless? There is a distinction between the two words. The term homeless elicits plenty of preconceived assumptions. Now, let's take a look at the definition of the two. According to Merriam-Webster, homeless refers to not having a home or a permanent residence. While the term homelessness is a noun, it refers to the state of not having a place to dwell. Then, who is considered homeless? A homeless person may not have a permanent abode and may live on the streets, in a shelter, or a mission, single room occupancy facility, abandoned building, or vehicle, or any other unsafe or temporary condition. A person may be homeless if they are double up, which is a circumstance in which people cannot maintain their living status and are forced to live with several friends and extended family members. In addition, formerly homeless people who have been released from jail or a hospital may be lost if they do not have a stable housing environment to which they may return. On the other hand, homelessness may not be solely a housing issue, but it is always a housing problem. Housing requires, though not always sufficient, to alleviate the pain of homelessness. Thinking also about the circumstances that they were in would make us wonder how they could live and how long they could bear it despite the changing seasons. How does homeless survive? It's difficult not to judge homeless individuals. Even if you're a kind person who donates to charities, you're usually uneasy when a homeless person approaches you and begs for money. In the back of your mind, you can't help but think, what is wrong with this individual that has caused them to be homeless? Of course, that's completely unjust. Some homeless individuals are lazy, but many others have had a series of terrible luck with no one to assist them. And, strangely, they would fare better than the typical individual in a severe tragedy such as an economic collapse. If you find yourself in an urban survival situation that drives you into the streets, you may find yourself seeking guidance from other homeless individuals. After all, they've been doing it for a long time. A homeless person had to have learned a thing or two about survival. But rather than waiting until you're homeless to learn from them, why not start now? Here are some survival techniques they can teach us. Layer your clothes. Homeless individuals understand the importance of keeping warm since many must sleep outdoors when freezing and snowing. Use newspapers to your advantage. Newspaper may be used to make a shelter, toilet paper, and, most importantly, firewood. Engage in water bottles. Another trick used by the homeless to stay warm is to keep hot water under their garments and then cover themselves with hot water bottles while going somewhere and before going to bed. Sleep in the same area as other homeless people. Get ready to move. Homeless individuals are also continuously moving and seldom dwell in one spot for an extended period. Pack only the necessary. To keep everything in your pockets and bag, you'll need to pack light. Carry nothing that you don't use daily. Avoid conflict. Is it a good idea to study self-defense techniques? Absolutely. To avoid conflict is one of the self-defense a homeless person should consider. Carry first aid kits. An infection might result from a wound or scrape. Carry some band-aids and antibiotic ointment with you in case you get injured. It isn't costly, and it might save your life. Make yourself at home in the crowd. It's a little known truth that homeless individuals are exceptionally good at fitting in with their environment. Make use of baking soda. Baking soda is one of the essential personal hygiene products in history. When mixed with water, it may manufacture anything from soap to deodorant, shampoo, and toothpaste. Don't eat anything. If you're starving, it could be tempting to consume food from the garbage, but doing so puts you at risk of getting food poisoning. It's ordinarily alright to eat leftover sweets or chips. Manage your emotions. Every day, homeless individuals are suffering from the same situation. They have no clue what they'll eat, where they will sleep or even where they'll go the next day. Despite this, they don't let their emotions get the better of them. If they hadn't, they wouldn't have lasted as long. These recommendations will be helpful in the event of a grid-down urbanized calamity in your area maybe. How do homeless people stay warm? 
the struggle of remaining warm is one of the most severe issues linked with homelessness. We'll never know how inventive those homeless people are regarding outdoor survival strategies and approaches. The following are their methods for staying warm throughout the wintertime. Clothing and insulation. Two pairs of socks, shoes, underwear, and shorts are examples of an ensemble that would keep the homeless warm, covered by a team of pants, a t-shirt, a long-sleeved shirt. A sweater and a coat cover everything, with a scarf wrapped around the neck, ears, and hygiene. Sometimes, homeless individuals would postpone showers and other skin wetting hygiene until the weather warms up. Because staying dry is essential for staying warm, homeless people often build makeshift shelters or migrate to abandoned houses to keep the rain out. Cases of cold conditions throughout the winter. When the weather becomes cold, homeless people create fires to keep warm or, if necessary, seek refuge in homeless shelters. To remain warm throughout the winter. Having a buddy will also keep you warm. Have you ever wondered why so many homeless people have dogs and would even buy dog food for the animals despite being unable to feed themselves? Sometimes talking to them removes their worries. A canine companion will serve if you don't have a trustworthy human partner. The companions serve a variety of purposes. They help you defend yourself. They keep you company so that you don't feel alone in your despair. Sleeping beside them will keep you warm also. They will guard you in any circumstances that occur. Never remove your baggage. Your survival pack is your lifeline. So that no one can take it, sleep with it strapped to you. Alternatively, use it as a cushion while wrapping your arms over it. This not only helps to avoid theft, but it also goes hand in hand with your future use. These are just a handful of the suggestions we can provide that homeless people employ and that may one day save your life as well. What are some needs of homeless people? Homeless shelters accept a variety of gifts, but not all of them are equal. Too many people abandon outdated toys, worn clothes, and other unwanted items to shelters. However, the giving attitude should not be confined to just letting go of what you don't desire. What do homeless people need the most? other than a shelter. Socks. Many homeless persons who live on the streets never remove their shoes. They walked a lot and because they couldn't always find toilets nearby. Personal hygiene products. A lack of cleanliness is one of the most significant barriers to unsheltered people's capacity to engage with others, particularly potential employers. Poor hygiene is also an essential source of health concerns in homeless people. Food. Providing someone money may help them in the future, but giving them food, even if it is a small amount, may help them immediately. Furthermore, since not every restaurant or organization feeds or welcomes unsheltered people, delivering meals directly to them may remove that barrier. Animal food. Many homeless individuals rely on their pets for survival. Dogs and other animals give their unsheltered owners a feeling of security, companionship, and connection that cannot be emphasized. Rain gear. Even a mild rain might cause considerable pain or even damage to personal goods while you're at the whim of the weather. Compassion. Humans that are homeless are simple people. They, like everyone else, want engagement and enjoyment. Regardless of the list above there is more to assist them in fulfilling their needs since they are human, just like us. We are all members of the same race, regardless of skin color, religion, or gender identity. We have had a similar experience. We all become hungry, cold, and need someone to understand what we're going through. This is fundamental to all people. This act of compassion is more than just meeting their necessities, it is also about making them feel like they exist and that strangers care about them. Where should the homeless go? The first and most effective strategy to combat homelessness is to prevent individuals from becoming homeless in the first place. Rent regulations, eviction protections, rent vouchers, subsidized housing, and other methods that serve the same are available. The primary methods for persons who have already been homeless to get accommodation are listed below. Temporary or emergency shelters are designed for short-term stays, and tenants are not required to sign contracts. They often contain dorm-style sleeping rooms. 
Low barrier shelters adhere to the harm reduction philosophy, with minimal regulations and restrictions imposed on persons seeking refuge. Navigation centers are low barrier shelters with case managers that help occupants find permanent homes and other resources. This strategy is known as a coordinated entry in certain areas, and it ensures ensuring people who join the homelessness access are connected to services that fit their needs. Informal or unofficial encampments are collections of tents and temporary structures. Sanctioned encampments are communities of non-traditional housing that are legally authorized and often financially sponsored by local governments. Oakland has built tiny houses, inexpensive, easy, and fast to make, in five municipal parking spaces, complete with restrooms, security, and other amenities. Single room occupancy, SRO, hotels and flats refer to all accommodation. And boarding homes. They are generally modest single rooms with communal baths and no cooking amenities. Transitional housing is a kind of short-term housing from two weeks to two years linked to programs to assist individuals permanently escaping homelessness. Transitional housing facilities, like emergency shelters, are often congregate living arrangements. Permanent supportive housing for homeless persons with disabilities or severe substance misuse disorders includes wraparound healthcare and other supporting services. Exploring alternatives to shelter and having a safe alternative to the sanctuary is often a far better approach to addressing their housing situation. Homeless health concerns. Is there any significant relationship between homelessness and health? Homeless people have a high proportion of health issues such as the following. There is a scarcity of health care. Having trouble getting enough food. Having difficulty remaining safe. Violence. Stress. Unsanitary living situations. Extreme weather exposure. In addition, some of the most common health problems that persons experiencing homelessness may have are as follows. HIV slash AIDS. Bronchitis, TB, and pneumonia are all examples of lung illnesses. Malnourishment. Problems with one's mental health. Substance abuse problems. Skin infections. Furthermore, they face many intrinsic and extrinsic hurdles to receiving health care services and being prone to these health conditions because of their lifestyles. Who are the homeless veterans? What exactly are homeless veterans? These are people who have served in the armed forces but cannot find a suitable home. According to the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, VA, most of the country's homeless veterans are males, with only around 5% women. The vast majority of them are single, from cities, and have mental illnesses, alcohol, drug misuse. On any given night, around 58,000 veterans are homeless, according to current demographic estimates, with probably twice that many experiencing homelessness at some time throughout the year. Many veterans are almost homeless or in danger due to poverty, inadequate aid from family and friends, horrible living conditions in low-cost hotels, or overcrowded or inadequate housing. Fortunately, the Veterans Aid specialized programs for homeless veterans to serve hundreds of thousands of homeless veterans each year. VA programs include housing solutions, career possibilities, health care, justice, and reentry-related services, and more independently and with government and community partners. The HELP Services to Assist Veteran Families, SSVF, program is a standard service. SSVF, on the other hand, provides case management and support services to low-income veterans. This program also attains to prevent the imminent loss of a veteran's home or identify a new, more suitable housing situation for the individual and their family and even to promptly rehouse homeless veterans and their families who would stay homeless if this help is not supplied. Nonprofit organizations and community cooperatives utilize SSVF money to house homeless veterans and their families swiftly and protect others from falling into homelessness by providing time-limited supportive services that encourage housing stability via referrals and direct outreach. Case management includes obtaining VA benefits and other advantages such as educational assistance and financial planning. Addressing the primary causes that lead to high rates of relationship breakdown among veterans is essential in decreasing homelessness among veterans. What is the meaning of homelessness? 
Homelessness refers to the position of a person, family, or community without stable, safe, permanent, suitable accommodation, or the foreseeable prospect means and capacity to get such. It is crucial to remember that this definition does not embrace all forms of homelessness. Different individuals influence differently, and each person's experience is unique. Homelessness is caused by more than simply a lack of housing. These differences are critical for addressing homelessness since one method does not work in every location. While homelessness is a kind of poverty, the two are not comparable. Economic instability is often the root cause of homelessness, and persons living in poverty are more likely to become homeless. The four types of homelessness are the following. Chronic homelessness. Chronically homeless people have been homeless on and off for a year or longer due to debilitating mental health issues, drug misuse disorders, or physical limitations. Episodic homelessness. People who are now homeless and have suffered three episodes of homelessness within a year are experiencing episodic homelessness. A person who has experienced episodic homelessness is more likely to become chronically homeless. Transitional homelessness. People who are transitionally homeless have found temporary refuge in shelters or transitional homes. Hidden homelessness. Hidden homelessness is more complicated since it includes people and families who do not have secure, permanent housing but are not actively living on the streets or in shelters. This includes persons forced to live in hotels, automobiles, or RVs parked in areas not intended or typically used for that purpose or friends' or families' houses. What does homelessness causes? One key factor is the scarcity of affordable homes. They may be unable to obtain a job because of a downturn in the economy or a health or mental ailment. When a family loses their job, they may become homeless for a few days, weeks, or months until they find another one. Other homeless people work but may not afford to house because of the growing cost of living in their neighborhood. People may become homeless due to war, natural calamities, or personal adversity, such as domestic violence. There are several misunderstandings concerning homelessness. Some feel it is a choice, they believe that if homeless individuals wanted to, they could get themselves off the ground and be homeless merely because they are lazy. On the other hand, Homelessness is not a choice, and there are many reasons why people become homeless. These include limited structural support for the poor, job loss, and poor case management for those released from hospitals, detention centers, and psychiatric facilities. Moreover, homelessness happens when society fails to detect and assist those in danger of becoming homeless. Failures in penal services, health care, and child welfare are all too prevalent. The inability of a society to address racial inequities, raise wages, and provide affordable housing also contributes to rising homelessness rates. Why homelessness is a problem. Whether we are homeless or not, we are all affected by it. It's a matter of public safety. Without their own home and the social standing to utilize it, homeless people often have to relieve themselves in bathrooms in businesses or outdoors on their own. They have minimal access to medical care and often suffer from chronic ailments resulting from poverty. Living situations that are difficult specifically, sleeping outdoors in every weather, eating cheap starchy meals, and being near other ill persons in social service organizations. Economical issue. People who do not have a place to live use many resources. The community incurs expenditures rather than gains due to its usage of public resources. A person will be chronically homeless shelter stays, jail time, emergency room visits, etc. Above all, homelessness is a human tragedy. Members of their community dwell in tents and beneath bridges, exposed to adverse weather and abuse, deprived of dignity and their rights and respect for everybody. When we consider what causes homelessness, we often include addiction, mental illness, and other pertaining factors. Illnesses, unemployment, and domestic violence are some of the possible effects. And they are all correct demographics features of the homeless people. Moreover, here are some ideas for minimizing homelessness. Numerous initiatives and regulations are settled to meet the homelessness issues. Preventative frameworks have the potential to prevent homelessness from occurring in the first place. 
Adapting the public health preventive approach to homelessness concerns entails addressing homelessness at the primary, secondary, and tertiary levels initiatives to bring about structural change, including primary prevention. Secondary prevention treats homelessness as soon as it occurs or avoids it with significant risk. Finally, tertiary prevention measures aim to keep those who have already experienced homelessness from becoming homeless again. Individuals may also help eliminate homelessness or lessen the burden on homeless individuals. Individuals may combat homelessness by providing money or resources to local groups that assist homeless people, volunteering with these organizations, or becoming advocates. There are several ways to contribute to eliminating homelessness and every gift matters. Homelessness is an issue that can be solved. Organizations thought that there was no such thing as a one-size-fits-all plan but that each town was distinctive, had unique demographic requirements, and needed to join together as a community to make its own choices and develop its plan.